My name is Albert Gilmet. I live in Musaka, Rhode Island. What you're hearing right now is my great-grandfather, age 63, in 1980. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions now, okay? Okay. And that's my mom, aged 10, interviewing him about what life was like during the Great Depression for a school project. How old were you when you were at the Depression? 13 years old. I only learned about his incredible life story a few months ago after hanging out with my meme, Albert Stodder. Albert lived the kind of life you only see in movies. It won't be easy to summarize, but I'll try my best. Luckily for me, he made it a little easier. He liked photography as a hobby, and so I could relive his stories through his pictures. Albert was born in 1917, a Canadian immigrant along with his seven sisters and three brothers. At 10 years old, he quit school to become the family cook for his family of 13. He was pretty crafty and used trapping to make enough money to buy the family's first car in his teens. Sometime in the early 1930s, he was also able to buy a camera. Soon after that, the Great Depression took its toll and Albert decided to take part in FDR's New Deal, working on the Oregon Trail through CCC camps. Did you go like to a CCC camp? There was no work at all and I joined the President of the United States, President Roosevelt, the best president we ever had. He made some CC camps, civilian conservation corps, and it was controlled by officers. Captain and lieutenant used to run the camp. And these camps were for youngsters, and we used to earn one dollar a day, thirty dollars a month, but we were uh, bored, they fed us and dress up. And we used to go all over the country. We volunteered wherever you wanted to go. I volunteered for Casper, Wyoming. Okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's where Albert's interview ends with my mom, but his story is only getting started. Now in the 1940s, the U.S. was getting involved in World War II. Albert went off to fight in the war, along with his brothers. Each one went into a different branch of the military, one in the Marines, one in the Air Force, one as a merchant marine in the Navy, and Albert joined the Army. While stationed in Jarny, France, Albert met with his future wife. When he approached her at the train station she was working at, she threatened to beat him with her wrench. Once he spoke to her in French though, she softened up a little bit. He only got her name, Paulette, and came back the next day desperate to find her. Looking for hints to anything that could lead him to her, he asked a random courier if he knew who she was. Turns out that courier happened to be Paulette's father, who invited Albert over for dinner, much to her surprise. Within three months, they were married and she was pregnant. That wasn't the only thing that happens throughout those three months, however. Albert, along with his wife and her sister, actually saved the town by stealing food, clothes, supplies, and secretly delivering them to the starving and poor citizens who were ravaged by the war. After Jarni, Albert was stationed all over Europe for several three-month increments. He brought his camera with him everywhere, taking photos of both great beauty of earth and horrific tragedy of war. The burden some of these photos have, I cannot imagine the reality. I hope to never know. Some of these photos, though, are extraordinarily beautiful and perfectly capture the time in which they were taken. After the war, Albert moved back to the US with his French wife and had a couple of kids. He bought some land for $3,000 and by himself built a home for his family from scratch. That house is still in the family and being used and loves today. When my meme told me about Albert's story and showed me his beautiful photos, I knew exactly what I had to do. I had to experience these places myself, and so I decided I would go to Paris, hunt down exactly where my great-grandfather stood, and recreate his photos nearly 80 years later. I went to my local print shop, made a few copies of his photographs, and took them with me. Using only internet searches, Google Maps, Street View, and context clues, I was able to find where most of the photos were taken. Over the course of two weeks, monument after monument, I grabbed my camera, my tiny prints, and my determination for the adventure to complete my treasure hunt. For some of these photos, you can never tell the difference between today and the early 1940s. It's insane to me the amount of work, talent, and ingenuity that went into making such intricate and gigantic buildings and pieces of art without any modern technology. Other photos weren't as similar. Some you could see that trees have grown or that structures have been slightly changed or were built upon. A challenge I found is that it would seem Albert took a tour of Paris, possibly on a tour bus. Some perspectives I couldn't perfect because I couldn't get 12 feet tall. I tried anyways, even if it angered a driver or two. There were a couple of other challenges that I ran into as well. 
A photo he took at St. Chapelle, a location I had only discovered once I had saw it in person, I couldn't return to as it was closed off to group tours only for that day. One of the more devastating locations was this fountain near Place de la Concord. I couldn't reach this perspective because of construction, and on top of that, the building in the background was not only under construction as well, but covered in these huge, jarring advertisements. As I took more and more photos, I felt my checklist coming to a complete. Well, at least as much as I could try and complete it. But something felt off and weird. I was in the same place, but it wasn't the same place anymore, if that makes any sense. I was experiencing this epiphany, but I couldn't place what it was. I think the best way I could illustrate this feeling I was having was by capturing just one last photo. So of all the photos that my great-grandfather took, I think there's one photo in particular that is extremely powerful because it really shows the time era that it was taken in. Unfortunately, this photo was not taken in Paris. It was taken in Orleans, France, which is a couple hours train ride south. I can't miss recreating this photo, so I decided to get myself two tickets, a round trip, to Orleans and back to Paris. And I just want to say real quick, thank you, Meme, for paying me an unfair amount of money just to bring you to the airport. You funded this little day trip for me. It wouldn't be possible without you. It has only been 80 years between my photos and my great-grandfather's, and so much has changed. Looking back into just the last few years, Notre Dame was all in one piece, the Azure window in Malta wasn't the Azure ruins, and Game of Thrones was still considered a greatly written show. Jokes aside, after reflecting on my great-grandfather's life while stepping into his shoes and reliving a part of his history, I was faced with some realities, and I came to understand my epiphany. We have the choice in life to either just let time wash over us with apathy, or instead take full advantage of the time we do have. Albert wasn't passive. He risked his life time and time again for the causes he believed in, and pursued his true love and he hustled and works to create the life that he wanted despite his poor upbringing. When I compare his photos from 80 years ago to the ones I took now, it's clear to me that time rolls on whether we like it or not. And though I don't believe we need to pursue a legacy like Albert's, I do think that we should focus on trying our damn best to live a full life, whatever that means to you personally. We should be passionate about the time we have and aim for pictures we take now to embody our own stories of lives well lived.